yourself, of yourself, that God can fill us this morning with the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for Pentecost Sunday, amen. Thank God that the Father sent the Son, amen, to do the work, and then the Son ascended back, amen, and 50 days later, he sent his Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to birth in the church. So this is our birthday today in the Lord, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and thank him for his Spirit. Thank him for his goodness and thank him for his mercy, amen. Whatever you're going through today, put it in the hands of the Lord, amen. It's a new day in him, amen. We're going to drink some new wine this morning in Jesus' name, hallelujah. As we go on with the service, I'm going to ask the praise team if they would open up and give us a song, amen, that we would have scripture, we would have prayer, another song, and then Mr. Cook will come and let us know what the Lord is about to say to this church today, amen? Amen. Amen. amen.
As we come for a time of scripture, a time of prayer, we're definitely in prayer for the family of Brother George Foster, who lost his life. We won't be like the world, but we'll take a moment of silence for those who are angry and violent, find a business, the economy is messed up, amen. Pray in their strength that they will also trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So for the family of Brother Foster, let's take a moment of silence. Amen. That justice will be done in the world. This morning's scripture will come from Ephesians chapter 6. Apostle Paul, powerful writing, Ephesians chapter 6. Again, reading at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And while you find it, I want to say, uh, God bless you to all of you who sought, made your way to service today. Uh, we thank those who are on Facebook Live. I would encourage you all, like I encouraged the officers yesterday, it's hard. We are outside the church. We can't meet uh, like we used to, but you can go on your website, archersgroveucc.com. You can keep up with what's going on. We can stay connected together. Amen. And then you can also... Uh, Minister Cook, who's our administrator right now, uh, you can reach out to him or text me and we will make sure that your comments make it to the uh, website page. Amen. I want to say good morning to Facebook Live. Amen. I want to thank all of you. While the church is physically, we're not physically in the church, but I want to thank you for continuing to support the gospel of Jesus Christ that the word will go forth. So I thank you for your tithes and offering. Those of you who are here now, and those of you on Facebook Live who give by PayPal, we want to thank you also. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 reads thus. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes, Lord. Put on the whole armor of God that yes. you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes, Lord. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints, and for me, that, my, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his read word. And now we will bear in prayer together uh, with Minister Shirley Seward. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's say amen. 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 Father God, I'd like to thank Brother Foster for coming out today. Our Father who in heaven, Father be thy name that kingdom come on earth as it's in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Mm -hmm. Of trials of tribulation and deliver us from evil and the kingdom and the power and the glory of man forever. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, 
Huh? Just go call it. You want to take a room? Or where are you going? No, I'm fine. You want to take a room? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll be out there. I like to walk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
things that are not as though they are. For his ways are not our ways. But his ways are higher than our ways. And if everybody could do me one favor, please uh, try and refrain from honking your horn. It kind of throws me off of focus to where I lose what I'm doing. Today, we're coming from Psalms, the 23rd Psalm, the most familiar Psalm or patches in the book. Gracious Father and our wise God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we can come before you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this chance that we can fellowship even though we cannot be inside, we can be outside. Amen. Lord, I pray that your spirit shall fall upon each and every one of us. That the word that you desire to go forth shall go forth. That it shall touch each and every heart. It shall penetrate it. Lord, let it do as David said. Your word I have hid in my heart that I shall not sin against it. Lord, I pray that your spirit falls upon me in a mighty way that I shall decrease and you shall increase, that I shall be your yielding vessel, and that your word shall come forth as you have it. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. 23rd Psalm of David. Very seldom do I read out of the King James, but it's appropriate for today. This. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd. And that right there, that's a powerful statement. 
That's definite. It's like you saying, this is my wife. Or this is my husband. It's definite. There's no if, ands, or buts. It says, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He's letting you know, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, he's always with you. As long as you trust in him, there's no need to have fear. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. For him to prepare a table, that means you've got to have enemies. You may not know it, but we all got some frenemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For a topic today, if you listen, I'll leave. Lord is my shepherd. What is that? David, he was a shepherd. He wrote this from the perspective of a sheep, knowing what a shepherd does and how a shepherd takes care of his sheep, how the sheep act, what the sheep do. So let's take a look at the sheep and why he took himself and put himself in the place of the sheep. It's noted, and most people think and consider sheep to be dumb and stupid animals. They say they wander around following one after the other. But if sheep are dumb, does that make us dumb and stupid? But the Lord calls us his sheep. Sheep don't follow the shepherd. That's a big misconception. The sheep follow the alpha sheep, which is the ram of the herd which follows the one that feeds them and supplies them with their needs. The past is our alpha sheep. People call him the under-shepherd because he leads us, he feeds us, and he guides us. But what he leads us and feeds us with is what he gets from the great shepherd who supplies him with what he needs from his riches and glory. So as we follow him, those same things that he gets, we get. The shepherd, the great shepherd, feeds us and supplies us with all of our needs. Sheep herd together and they form a lifelong lasting relationship. They bond together, they take up for one another, but from time to time, they tend to stray away. They see something they want, they see something they like, they wander off out after it, and as they go, they get farther away, they look back, they're still there, they keep on going, they look back, I can still see them. The next thing you know, they're down a rabbit hole. they lost. They don't know how to get back. Don't that sound familiar with things that we do in life? We follow the rabbit hole. We see things that we want and we desire, whether it's money, a woman, a man, some things that we just look at and we say we want it and we go after it. But the grass ain't always green on the other side. So as we follow after it, we chase after it, we desire it, we become lost as well. So then we get deeper and deeper in our mess. And then by getting deeper and deeper in our mess, we don't do nothing to create a bigger mess. See, in Matthew, Jesus said, if one of your sheep gets lost, will you not leave the flock and go after it? He's letting us know that if any one of us, at any given time, though we're going to do it, follow something that we shouldn't follow, go after something that we shouldn't go after, even hang on and go after those things of the world he untold us to let go, he's still going to come get us. 
He's not going to leave us stranded. You see, sheep do have a good quality. They are obedient. So when the shepherd calls them, they hear the shepherd, and they come running immediately. But the difference between sheep and us, when the Lord calls us, you may be riding down the road, and he says, take a right here. He's telling you to take a right for a reason. But what do we do? We turn up the radio like we're going to ignore him, or we'll start thinking about something else. And we don't turn that way. He may be trying to keep us out of trouble. He may be trying to lead us somewhere where we need to be for a specific purpose to do a specific thing. And then we wonder why, when we get in these situations, and we begin to call on him, he makes us wait. That's what he does. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Are we his sheep? In verse 2, it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my, I'm sorry, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. The shepherd leads the flock to green pastures. He leads them there because that's where they get their food, they get their rest, and they can just be themselves without having to worry of danger. And he leads them to still waters because, believe it or not, Sheep are afraid of moving water. They like me. They're afraid of things that move too fast. So they have to go somewhere to get water in a brook or a stream that doesn't flow really fast or they won't take water. So if we follow him, he'll give us the peace and the rest that we need. For he'll lead us to those green pastures and to those still waters. For that's peace in Christ. He said, my peace, I leave with you. So we spend time worrying about things that are beyond our control or involving ourselves in matters and situations and things that we shouldn't be involved in, trying to tell people what they ought to do, how they ought to act. And then it doesn't do anything but cause of stress and worry. So why worry? Why get involved in it? First of all, it's not your concern. And those things that you're stressing over that are your own, why worry? It's okay to be concerned, but what does worrying change? Worrying doesn't change the situation. It doesn't fix the situation. Some people, when they worry, they begin to eat. Some people, when they worry, they stop eating. What good is it? It's no good. So there's no point in worrying of those things that you have no control over. So Jesus said, if you cast all your burdens upon me, that means we got to give it to him and let it go. Stop worrying about it. There ain't nothing you can do. If you don't receive your light bill, your last cutoff notice, and they're going to cut it off tomorrow, ain't but one or two things going to happen. Either you're going to get the money and pay it, or they're going to cut it off. Ain't no need of stressing over it. Ain't no need of losing no sleep over it. It's just going to happen. Let it go. Give it to him. He'll fix it. For in verse 3, it said, he'll lead, he, he restoreth my soul and leadeth me in the path of righteousness. When we get involved in our messes, and we try and dig ourselves out of these messes, we keep digging ourselves deeper in these messes. We ain't figured it out. Don't get in the mess, first of all, but we're going to do that anyway. That's just us. We're not going to listen. So when everything comes to us and hits us at once, and we're all overwhelmed and we get in our messes, we do have a way back. And it's a way back in peace. Once we do those things, John tells us that if we confess our, son, our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. He said in Psalms that 
He brings health to the body and nourishment to your bones. So he's letting us know that no matter what we do, no matter what we get involved with, it's not too bad. Somebody's done something worse than you, and he went out there and got them from where they was at. All you have to do is call on his name, and he's coming to get you. So when we stray away, don't worry. Well, of course, worry. But the Lord is still looking over you. He's watching out for you. He said he's married to the backslide. So those who have turned away and slid back into the world and forsaked the Lord and God, he's still there looking out for you. He's still going to take care of you. I know many times when I was out doing things and I would get in trouble or see something coming, first thing I did was, Lord, help me. And I have a beer in one hand and a blunt in the other and still calling his name. And you know what? He still saved me from the situation that I was in. So no matter what, he has a purpose for each and every one of us. If he didn't have a purpose for us, I wouldn't be standing here today. He would have let whatever happened to me happen, and I wouldn't be here. But he let it happen for a reason and for a purpose. And I don't regret any of it, because everything that he's allowed me to go through and everything that I've done in the past, right or wrong, has made me the person that I am today. And I thank him for it. So Jesus is the good shepherd. He said that he lays down his life for his sheep. And he did. He gave his life on Calvary. That we could have life more abundantly. But all we got to do is listen and just let him lead us. But it's one of the hardest things that we can do. We don't want to let go of self. We don't want to let go of the things that we think we can control, which we can't. It may look like you're in control, but it says he ordered the steps of the righteous. So you're going to try not to go left and you're going to go right. But eventually you're going to start making more rights because you're going to wind up left where you was at. Mm. And while he let me study these texts, he actually showed me some things that I never thought of and never knew. In these six little verses, sums up the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's all about his peace, his rest, and his love. Every line tells us about his love and his peace. That he will never let us go. That he's always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Remember back in the day, as you were growing up, you have issues, you take them to your grandmother, your mother, and the first thing they yell, at least to me, boy, you need to read the 23rd Psalm. And I would read the 23rd Psalm, and I'm like, so, what? Didn't get it. But now I get it. He sent me a lot of revelation through this, letting me know no matter what I do, what we do, He's always there for us. If you backslid, he's there. If you're out there doing something you don't want to do in your own offense, he's there. If you look warm, he's still there. Because he wants you to pull, he wants to pull you on the right side of the fence where he is at. So that we can all do what is right. He also showed me in these six little verses, every single verse. He's there. Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. Jehovah Roha, my protector. I shall not want. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. Jehovah Adonai, 
my master. He leadeth me beside still waters. Jehovah Shalom, my peace. He restoreth my soul. Jehovah Rafi, my healer. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Jehovah Tiskanu, my righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death. Je Jehovah Shema, my divine presence. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Jehovah Tisbaha, my warrior. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Jehovah Eli Elion, my defender. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Jehovah Nisi, my encourager. Thou anointest my head with oil. Jehovah Miskadish, my righteousness, sanctifier. My cup runneth over. Jehovah El Shaddai, my nourisher. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Jehovah El Elyon, my protector, my strong protector. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jehovah El Oleum, my eternity. In every single line, the Proverbs is God. His protection, his love, his peace. And as we go and we read and actually examine each one of those scriptures, we see that his grace is sufficient. He stands by us. He stands with us. He doesn't let us go because we are his. He called us before the foundation of the world. Before anything was created, he called each and every one of us. He made us the way we are because he made us perfect. So there's no need of saying, I got a big nose. I don't like my eyes. I don't like you know, this or that. He made each and every one of us perfect and in his image. So we are who we are supposed to be. We just need to continue to listen to him, spend time with him, and he will keep us. And yes, there are going to be those times where we're going to slip, we're going to fall, and we're going to stray away. But he's got his rod and his staff. He's taking his rod, beating off the enemy. And his staff, he's hooking it on, he's bringing us right back. Because we belong to him. We're not going anywhere. We belong to Christ. So if there's anyone here that has not given their life to Christ, who has not tasted the goodness of Christ, just say so. And we'll be more than happy to lead you to Christ. And if there's anyone that desires prayer, raise your hand. We can pray for you. We can all pray together. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this opportunity this day. We thank you, Lord, for your word. For your word was intended for all of us. For there is something that came forth, Lord, that each and every one of us needed. Lord, there are some of us out here that your, all of your word was meant for. And we thank you for it. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us, that you will touch us, that no matter what we've done, Lord, where we've gone and where we've been, let us know that you're with us. You can bring us back. You can lead us back. We just have to be obedient. We just have to be faithful. We just have to listen. That's all we have to do is listen. And we'll follow you because you will lead us. You will lead us to green pastures. You will lead us to still waters. 
and you will lead us into righteousness. Father, touch each and every one out here as they open the doors even more on society and more people go out. Let us not worry about the situation, but let us be concerned about the situation. Let us live cautiously, knowing, Lord, that we need to protect ourselves and to protect others who aren't willing to protect themselves. Give us the strength, Lord, that we need to go forth each and every day. Lord, give us the joy that you have for us. Let your peace rest upon us, that we might have peace everlasting. Father, let your grace shadow upon us. Keep us, Lord, in your favor. And we thank you, Lord, right now. Amen, amen, and amen. Powerful word from the 23rd Psalm. Minister Jeff Cook, let him show him your love by giving him a hand clap of play, blow your horn, let him know that you thank him for his faithfulness, thank him for his prayers, amen. Before the praise team, you have one more time before you come. Uh, I want to do some business. I'm going to call on Brother Curtis Taylor, uh, our own chairman. Deacon, come forth, Brother Taylor. Deacon George King, you have to take a mic. Uh, ask Brother uh, Deacon uh, Arthur Trollinger if he would come. Uh, March the 15th, 2020. Had the opportunity to go to St. Paul, United Church of Christ in Middleburg, North Carolina, to preach the anniversary of Pastor Darrell Lee Carr. After the preaching, the invitation was given, and to my surprise and, 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 and excitement and joy, uh, Brother Curtis uh, joined the church, amen, or we dedicated back to the church, amen. So now Brother Taylor is, uh, he's back home, amen. He's in the fold of God where he should be. Ain't that good news? Yeah. Yeah. Even though the enemy think he can stop us, Brother Jimmy, God is blessing you whether we're here or whether we're not here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I'm going to call on Brother, our chairman, and ask him if he would give us, uh, uh, if those who accept uh, Brother Peller back into our fold, uh, it's in the hands of you, Brother Chairman. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, before I get into the sermon, I want to commend Pastor Thompson. I noticed him going from vehicle to vehicle, and I think that was a great thing for him to do this morning, so I want to commend him for that. And let us get on. Uh, Brother Taylor, Curtis. Brother Curtis Taylor has already found Christ, so I make a motion, and that he be accepted as a full paid member of the Grove Church and given full rights and privileges. Uh, we give him, do I have a motion? Blow your horns. <laughs> All right. So we've heard the motion. I'll turn it back over to the pastor. All right. Thank you. Okay. A second. Second. All right, we moved and second and approved that Brother Pella is back in the fold of God. Amen. Amen. And we can use his gifts and talents for the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 And then when we are back in the church again, we can give him the right hand of fellowship. Ain't that right? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank, thank you, Brother Pella. God thank bless you. you. Amen. All right. And also, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Deacon King, Deacon Trollinger. God bless yeah. you. Also, the, uh, while we're in this uh, pandemic or crisis, so the world say, God is still blessing. I had a visitor come to my home, and uh, he got his aunt to bring in there, uh, Brother Dorian Merritt, and he wanted to join the church. He wanted to become a candidate for baptism. Amen. amen. So, so Pastor here, Pastor had to get in the car with him, amen, yeah. and explain that thing to him. Amen. amen. 
And so he's not here today, but when we when we can get him here, uh, we'll, we'll get our deacons to come up and do the same thing where he'll be an official candidate for baptism. Amen. And then when he come back in here, we're going to dunk him in the water in Jesus' name. Ain't that good? All right, all right. Uh, as I get ready to leave, I want to pray for uh, Brother Colby Medley, who is the son of Dominic Medley and his, 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 his mother. I want to pray for them. I want to pray for all the families that are connected to Brother Colby that God will see him through uh, this mysterious illness. Amen. Yeah. Also, I want to lift up the Nevin family. Amen. At the passing yeah. of Brother Fred Nevin. Amen. We will continue to lift that family up. And also, we're going to lift up uh, the family of Brother John Conley. Uh, who passed, amen, we will lift that family up, and we will also lift up uh, the petite Richmond and Poole family, amen, that God is still in control. Father, we ask you to touch, heal, and deliver those families that we have lifted up. Thank you, God, for uh, our Brother Paler, who has made his way to the house of God, that you can use him for your glory. God, we thank you now for the church down the street and the church up the hill, amen, Hopedale uh, Christian Church and Deep Creek Baptist Church and their pastors and their congregations. God, we ask you now that you would continue to bless uh, those who are uh, sick and afflicted uh, from this uh, COVID-19 and this coronavirus. God, let us be mindful and cognizant that you are still in control. God, I thank you now for those who took part in service, but uh, Minister Cook, who preached the word of God, that you will refill and restore him. Bless our musicians, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Deacon Hall, and I ask you to uh, bless our good time players, Brother Seward and Brother Slim and Brother Jimmy, who's faithful on the drums. Amen. We thank you, God, for our praise team, God, who's poured out. I pray, God, that you will pour back into them. Then God reach out virtually and bless those on Facebook Live. That when we leave this place, but never from your presence, God, we forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And before I do the benediction, I want to say that we have been doing joint ventures. We met again with the pastors up the street, like I said, and down the street, Hopedale, down the road, and Deep Creek up the road. And we're asking for your support when, you, when, we, when we get it together, your support, your time, and your money, anything that you can do. Amen. What we're going to do is we're building up the food bank. We're going to build up for, up the road first, and then they're going to come. They're going to help us build up. Amen. And then we're going to go down the hill and help them build up. Amen. So wh whatever people need, if you need some little food, if you need some assistance, we're going to try to do what we can to help you. Amen. And then members, saints, and friends, we got some gloves for you. We got some masks for you. We want you to come out. We're going to have some food. We're going to let some folk drive through one of these days. We're going to put some food in their car. We're going to pray for them. Amen. Don't worry about who get the food. Don't worry where it comes from. All our help comes from the Lord. Amen. We just gonna do what we're supposed to do for a change, and God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Now let's look to the hill from which cometh our help. Amen. All of our help comes from the Lord, the Creator of heaven and earth. Y'all still gonna come back and sing us out the way, ain't you? Y'all done? All right. All right. All right. May the love of God, the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest. Rule and abide his for now and forevermore. If you believe it, lift up your voice and say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Hmm.